What up and welcome to Rama Screen YouTube channel and here's my review of Netflix's new documentary series Caught in the Web, The Murders Behind Zona Divas. Let's rock this. Okay, so this latest true crime docu from Netflix is just heartbreaking through and through. Usually when I comment on a content, any content, I'd usually have a few adjectives to describe them. But in this case, I only need one because my heart just falls to the floor for the victims in the story. Yes, the docu also has its suspenseful, crazy, scary moments of the modern exploitation of the oldest profession in the history of the world. But mostly you just feel deeply sad, especially for the victims' families, who are absolutely helpless in preventing the tragedy from taking place. Coming straight from Mexico, caught in the web, the murders behind Zona Divas, aka El Portal, is gonna haunt you. It will stay in your head for days. This docu will make you realize, especially if you're outside the United States bubble, it will make you realize how economic desperation and emotional devastation often go hand in hand. Because when you are pushed to the corner in terms of dire survival, well then that allows for predators to take advantage of the situation. And yes, this kind of horror happens in the United States too, that's true, but the impact and the pressure are much more immense when economic opportunities are basically slim to none. Directed by Astrid Rondero and Maria Fernandez Valadez, in the dark underbelly of Mexico City, women seeking a better life find themselves entangled in an online escort network without imagining that it would all culminate in a series of femicides. What you need to understand is that Zona Divas is not one of them. Oh, you need a fake girlfriend to accompany you to your rich party so as to make it seem as if you got a lady in your arms? No, that's not it. Zona Divas is, or was, since the website's already shut down, it was a prostitution and sex trafficking ring. They can window dress or sugarcoat it however they want, but it was a prostitution and sex trafficking ring. And you know how some websites allow for the sex workers to do webcam stuff and make money for themselves by doing these webcams? That's not it either. Zona Divas was just straight up, I'ma take your passport, you owe me this amount of debt, I know where your family lives, so either you open your legs for our clients or things are gonna go bad for you. This whole crime happened just within this past decade, but Zona Divas was operating like some kind of intimidating, old-timey, shadowy gangster mafia that treats women like slaves, literally. So there are four episodes in this docu, and the filmmakers really go into details on what transpired with these women. And the one thing they all have in common is that they come from a place, mostly Venezuela, where the governments just absolutely do not care about their own citizens, and prices of groceries are through the roof. The docu terrifically re-emphasizes that fact over and over again. In order to chip away, on the old age stigma associated with sex workers. Oftentimes, societies would judge them for their line of work, when the reality is sometimes they have no other choice. Either that or they don't eat. Either that or their family members don't get the medication that they need. So on and so forth. And so Caught in the Web goes above and beyond to, yes, expose this particular underworld, but more importantly, to get audiences to understand where sex workers are coming from and to side with their plight. All of the girls in this docu leave an impression on me, including the one who thought she was getting a 9 to 5 job until Zona Divas told her exactly what they expected her to do. But the one that stands out the most is the girl terrorized by that killer El Pozoles. I believe that's his nickname if I'm not mistaken and the way that the filmmakers chronicle the gradual escalation of her situation from bad to worse is just downright disturbing. There's also that brilliant yet chilling combination of CCTV footage with the reenactments of that motorcycle helmet guy. The filmmakers also go so far as to uncover law enforcement's incompetence. I mean, no stones left unturned, 
every nook and cranny featured on this docu only reveals how much everything and everyone was just going against these women at every turn, every step of the way. Oh, and the nerve on the owners of Zona Divas claiming that they had nothing to do with the murders and that their business is clean and legitimate and the women who work there and post stuff on their website do so voluntarily. Just lies after lies after lies. This whole thing is also an indictment of Mexico's corrupt justice system that could not be bothered to do their goddamn job. Last but not least, I'm glad this docu points out what I have truly believed for a while in that there needs to be a better set of regulations to protect sex workers. We need to legalize it, tax it, and regulate it. Look, if women want to do this type of occupation, it would have to be because they choose to do it and not because they are coerced or forced or trafficked into it. Look, it's tough out there. We all know it firsthand. So who are we to judge somebody who says, you know what, I am going to do this in order to pay my bills, in order to pay my rent. Well, that's your prerogative, man. And so regulations will help these women make a livable living and eliminate the risk of them losing their lives in the process. So yeah, overall I give Caught in the Web, The Murders Behind Zona Divas, the rating of 4 out of 5. It's one of the most deeply affecting, poignant, distressing, heart-wrenching documentaries I've seen on Netflix this year. It's also a significant, substantive docu that all y'all need to check out.